Hello everyone and thank you for being here. This is the security working group update at Kubeflow Summit slash KubeCon 2024. I'm Diana Tanasova, software engineer at uh, VMware by Broadcom. And today I am here with Julius von Kochert, who is a freelancer and a DHL employee and a leader of two Kubeflow working groups, security and manifests. So for the last two releases, Kubeflow project has a dedicated security working group, which main goals includes define clear policies and procedures on how to report and disclosure vulnerabilities. And of course, enforce the use of security best practices across all working groups. Um, we welcome new contributors. We offer mentorships and here on this slide, you can find uh, useful links to our Slack uh, meeting minutes. So feel free to reach out to us. For more technical details, you can check out our uh, previous KubeCon and uh, KubeFlow Summit presentations. Now, regarding security requirements, there are the official CNCF guidelines and even the CNCF graduation criteria contains a lot of security related stuff. Um, we are still examining it. We are going through the checklist with the CNCF, so it's work in progress. But in the meantime, let's talk about architectural issues. Because there's one major one. It's about multi-tenancy, especially within Kubeflow pipelines. And that's the case that we have zero multi-tenancy for object storage as well as zero multi-tenancy for metadata storage, which just means these storage systems within Kubeflow pipelines are just not isolated per user, which is, of course, a severe problem for our enterprise customers. I mean, there are some downstream solutions, but it's not yet properly implemented upstream. And last but not least, we also have to improve our automatic CVE scanning and updating of vulnerable dependencies because at the moment it's still a manual process. Now talking about uh, CV image scanning, this table shows uh, the results from our last uh, CV scanning. Um, it contains information about the number of images per working group with their CVs divided by severity. Um, we already had a uh, great improvement in lowering these numbers, but as you see, there is still more to do. Um, but more, most of these CVs actually comes from our external dependencies or from the underlying operating system and can be addressed by upgrading to a newer version or rebasing the image. There's one major change and it's about replacing the ORDC off service with OF2 proxy. So exchanging our authentication system within Kubeflow. And it's finally going to happen in Kubeflow 1.9, especially with proper token-based machine-to-machine authentication. So no ugly authentication hacks are needed anymore. Then, we also have network policies as a second layer of defense before Istio. If the KSC, the Kubeflow Steering Committee, or the Technical Oversight Committee agrees, we might also enable them by default as a second layer of defense. And the third major area is rootless Kubeflow, because by default we still use root containers, especially in user-controlled namespaces. And this not only violates Kubernetes best practices, it also makes it very easy to exploit. Therefore, we have an optional Istio CNI proof of concept available in the manifest repository. Please try it out and provide feedback because it might allow us to get Kubeflow 99% rootless in the future. And as soon as this is implemented, we will go to the next step. That's about enabling pod security standards. First with warnings and later on enforcements to block dangerous containers by default. So as you can see on the left hand side, 
we've already achieved quite a lot over the last few releases. But today, I want to focus on the right-hand side, where you can see that rootless containers, as well as automatic CVE scanning, and some KFP UI issues are actively being worked on, while the KFP denial of service attack is finally solved. It's quite important for large enterprises which want to scale to tens or hundreds of millions of runs in the KFP database, and that is finally possible. But the three major problems regarding multi-tenancy, ML metadata, artifact storage, and namespace sharing multi-tenancy are still pending. So we're still working on them and looking for volunteers. So thank you very much for this high-level overview. There are way more technical talks available as well. Please rate our talk and reach out to the security working group. Are there any questions for Julius and Diana about security um, or anything related to the security working group? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you for your update. Uh, yeah, I, I have a question on uh, um, the uh, name, uh, sorry, NetPol enforcement you were, you were mentioning. Is that targeting the um, Kubeflow, let's say, control plane components? So the, uh, I don't know, the pipeline namespaces and, and, and all of that, or is it targeting the end user namespaces? Because it would be interesting to understand if uh, you are providing like a baseline of controls which gets applied to all your different like user namespaces regardless of, uh, yeah, which workloads they are running. Well, it's definitely possible to do just both. At the moment, what I have upstream in the manifest repository in slash contrib network policies, they are just for the Kubeflow core control plane at the moment. But you can also easily extend them and cr create them by default in every customer or user namespace to protect the user namespaces as well. And yeah, very quick follow up on this. Uh, with regards to PSS enforcement, which you mentioned will be uh, down the line, is this also going to apply to the core namespaces only or by default, or is it going to apply to uh, the user managed namespaces as well? Um, are you talking about rootless containers? Well, no, I'm talking about uh, pod security standards. Ah, pod security. Yeah. Okay. Pod security standards, of course, we can easily enforce them in the Kubeflow main namespaces. That's already possible now. But um, we also have some PRs open to make it possible to easily specify the pod security standards, baseline restricted, and so on, per user namespace as well. The PR is still pending. Thank you. And there's also probably, we are also working with solo.io, the company behind um, Istio on ambient mesh, because this would be the next step then after Istio CNI. I have a question specifically about KServe. Um, it seemed that that one was pretty hot as far as the CVEs, and I wonder Can how much of that. Can you a little louder? Oh, sorry. How much of the how much of the, the the security issues that you that we saw in the graph regarding KServe is specific to, or or, or is because KServe is by nature uh, serving models out in the open, and how much of it is like core to the core to uh, to KServe itself? Because one of the biggest things that we uh, get asked a lot by security is KSERV specifically, partly because it's, you know, like we're serving models, but um, so I want to know, like, what, what's, the, what's the kind of breakdown between, um, you know, the, the, the serving part versus, like, issues that are, that are baked, that are not related to, um, you know, like, incoming requests and that sort of thing, if that makes sense. Can you rephrase it a little? So how much? So how much of it? How much of the? How much of the security issues are because it's uh, you're serving models over HTTP and that comes with some some risk. And how much of it is uh, related to things unrelated to that 
part of KServe, the way KServe is architected itself? I mean, I would have to look into the list of CVEs to provide you exact okay. details. There's a script within the manifest repository. It can help you to extract the images per working group. Then you can run the images through a security scanner, as for example, Trivi. Then you get a list of CVEs, and then you can just check yourself. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Keep in mind that while KServe is a core component of Kubeflow, KServe itself does not belong to the Kubeflow project. KServe belongs to the Linux Foundation and their AI um, group. So while it is a core component, we don't have direct control over that, that piece of it. So does that, does that also help explain some of that? Um, we do have a break now, a 15 minute um, break, but if anybody wants to continue, like some hallway track talks or anything, we'll be in here, um, and then we'll start back again at 15 after, so please come back or continue the conversation with us while we're in here.